Welcome back to another exciting episode of Is My Engine Buggered or Not? So, um, I did a compression test late last night on a couple of the cylinders and it didn't go very well. So, in this video we're going to be doing a full compression test and we're going to be pulling the carbs off, have a look inside and probably the intake manifold to see the state of the camshaft because I still don't know why this bloody car isn't running very well. Now, it has healthy oil pressure, um, which is a good sign, but it just, ah, it's giving all the symptoms of maybe a bad mixture or clogged up carbs, but we've already done the mixture three times, so that could mean that there's actual gunge inside the carbs, which is not unlikely. So for any experts who may be watching this, I'm going to do a cold start. So I haven't started this since yesterday. Let me just clip my microphone on my coat real quick. Hopefully you can hear me okay. We have Lucas's trusted compression tester here. He was actually supposed to come here yesterday and we were supposed to do it, but uh, Lucas's stupid Peugeot and the ignition barrel failed, like completely failed. The key was just flopping around like a prick in a hurricane. So he couldn't start the car and we couldn't get up here. So all the normal procedures, put the key in. I can't express how much I like this wheel. This wheel is really nice. Um, hmm. Now, how do I hold the choke out? Because I don't have a spare hand. Hopefully this clothes peg is enough choke. Oh my god, that's atrocious cam work. I do apologise. Oh, is it actually going to stay? It might. See what happens. This is very normal for this car anyway. So nothing at first. <sighs> Come on. Oh, you re are you serious? Really? You started fine yesterday. That is not even trying, is it? Oh, for God's sake. Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an absolute moron. I know exactly what's wrong. <laughs> I know exactly what I've done. Hilariously. The coil's not the king lead, the king lead's not connected. <laughs> oh, Sheldon, you muppet! Yeah, because I was doing a compression test. Um, <laughs> one of the spark plugs is out. Great start. Anyway, so yeah, it will fire up and it will run. But while the lead's off, I say we go ahead and do a compression test. So let's whip some of the plugs out. Right, we got our compression gauge in cylinder number one and we're going to turn the engine over and see where this needle goes it should be about 150 but this has got low compression pistons in it so i'm not 100 percent sure what it is i'll have to have a google um i know a bit about the v8 engine i know about lots of the incarnations and stuff like that you know the rare stuff they made but i don't know a lot about compression ratios you know stroke what tolerances things should be i've never rebuilt one of these before so we're going to find out. Give the engine a turn. Ten, three, four turns is enough. With a good battery, and that will tell us what the compression is. That'll do. We'll look at the gauge and see what we got. Oh, 160. That is better than it was before. Maybe the battery was a bit low. Hmm. So all we've got to do is unscrew this. It screws directly into the uh, into the head. Now, if we want to release the pressure, we just press this little valve, and there we go. Off it goes. We unscrew it, put the plug back in, and repeat the process for all eight cylinders. It takes a while. Apparently, you don't have to do all of them. You can do sort of, you know, intermediate seal. Oh God, intermediate cylinders and stuff like that, but. Realistically, I want to do all of them. It's just a bit more thorough. 
But that's good compression, so... Mm, I don't know what's going on with it, then. If the compression's good, then why is it running... Very, there's no suction at all from these carbs. Zero. Like, no suction. Which usually means compression. But... Clearly not. You might be able to hear the church organ, if you're lucky. Also, the... Um, Plugs are black as hell, so that's been running rich. Give those a clean. There's actually a new set, a brand new set of NGKs in the boot, which is great because I nearly ordered some from Mark Gray, but uh, saved me a bit of money. Uh, if you need any bits for your P6, go check out Mark Gray, MGBD. He uh, is fantastic. And Jeff, of course, at Wins, uh, he's also fantastic. Don't think I've ever spoke to Jeff, maybe a couple times, but I speak to Mark all the time. Lovely guy. I'm sure Jeff is a nice chap too. <laughs> so I was having problems accessing the plugs, but I forgot about the tube spanner that comes with it. This was a godsend because, let me just swap hands a minute. It was a godsend because a lot of spark plug spanners don't fit because it's a very narrow, you know, fit. So there's not a lot of room in there. Let me just get it in there like that. We'll get it to fit first. There we go. And we just rotate it. There's not a huge amount of room, I will say that. These blooming leads are getting in the way, but I always get the firing orders wrong and I always forget them. Ah! There we go. There we go. And you just uh, give it a turn. Sorry, my camera work's being awful right now because I'm struggling with this plug. And we just spin it around and there it is. And there it is, that's a loose plug. Now, I'm curious to see what this plug's going to be like, if the first one's rich as hell, then the other one's probably going to be. But the plug stinks. I mean, it stinks like of oil, which is a problem. Oh, it stinks of fuel. It stinks, though. It smells like burnt, which is not very good. It could be just unburnt fuel, but we'll see. Yeah, this one's... Well, that's better, actually. That's a goldeny brown kind of colour. Little bit black, but that's significantly better. Ooh, uh-oh. That is oil. That is oil. That's not good. Plugs are a bit oiled up. That's not really ideal. So that's the first plug, which is black. That's the second one. Uh crap. That's not good news at all. The plugs look new. They, it's had plugs recently, I think. Maybe three, four years ago. Maybe more frequent than that, even. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to take the rest of these plugs out, and we'll see what we get. Right, we've taken the third plug out, and it's pretty nasty. Don't know why you can see that. There's bits of black gunge in there. Like, it looks like oil. Bits of oil. Stinks. Um, and I think there might be a bit of rubber in there. Maybe. The valve stem seals could be on the way out. But that stinks, and that is oil. So, that could be why. Or it's fuel. It smells like... Like, fuel. But there's, like, bits of... I don't know where you can see it. There's bits of gunge around the, like, the thread there. Very odd. I need to check out the, um, I'm going to pull the carbs off and have a look, um, but the compression's been good so far, I think the battery's a bit low when I did it last time, but that, I mean, in the spark plug hole is really oily, it looks really oily. At least I know the starter motor is good, because I put a new one on. You know, when the car was still marked, so I gave him a new old, we, we did a new old stock um, starter motor on it. There we go. The compression's been fine so far. It's, it's very strange. Very, very strange. We'll tighten that up a little bit. These don't have to be super, super tight, but as tight as you can do them by hand is what you want. There we go, that's connected. Turn that over again, see what the gauge says. That's all we need. 
Bloody hell, that one's great. 170. Well, that is interesting. Okay, so we have 150, 140, 170. Hmm. 150, 140, 70. 150, 140, 170. Very interesting. Hmm. Well, I'll whip the final plug out and we'll see what's happening. Right, I'm starting to see a pattern here. So, compression, 160 on this cylinder. But this is the plug. And it is covered in oil. Black as anything. It smells like oil. It stinks of oil, in fact. Um, so I think the oil ring is gone. The oil rings are worn out. Which might explain why it has good compression but there's oil all over the plugs. So that could be it. Um, some of these plugs are so ridiculously tight, I can't get them out. I've used a bar, and it's like someone's put them in with an air gun. Like, they are ridiculously tight. So the front two on this side, forget it. I can't get them out. The back one came out pretty easily. In fact, it was loose. Um, so I'm going to try the next one along and see if that one comes out. But... It's looking like oil control rings, because that is not a healthy amount of oil around a plug. <sighs> also giving them a bit of a clean up with the wire brush. Um, we're going to run the car again, get some more charge in the battery, because we've been spinning it over, spinning it over. But it's definitely looking like uh, oil control rings. There's oil getting in there. Um, either it could be the control rings, or it could be the valve stem seals, which I think is more likely, because... Obviously it's burning oil, and there is smoke coming out the back, and it is a bit blue. Could well be valve stem seals, which would make more sense, because it's been sat, the rubbers disintegrate, etc. So it could well be valve stem seals. In fact, I suspect it is, but there's no real way of knowing. We're going to, um, we can do some more tests, but I'm pretty confident that's what it is. Which is not great news, because I don't really want to take this engine apart. I have a 4.6, I might just swap it out. Um... Well, I have a mostly complete 4.6. Um, the liners in the block aren't any good, so I need a new block. And I'll just swap all the parts over and put a 4.6 in it. Um, there's a guy on the Rover V8 forum who said, oh, it'll break back axles with a 4.6 in it. It won't. Um, Peter Tormelin, who I know, had a 4.2 in his, and he was shredding burnouts in it, and it didn't break the back axle. Um, he has a turbo one, a 4.8 with a turbocharger on it, and that didn't break a back axle, ever. Completely stock rear-end P6 back axle, never broke. So, it just, it's just like a draw, really. But unless you're really abusing it and ripping burnouts every day, more than likely, your axle's going to be fine. The diffs, it's, it's an odd thing with a P6 diff. A lot of people say they're weak. Uh, Kevin, when he was still alive, bless him. Um... He ripped a burnout over a bridge to impress the girlies who were in their bikinis swimming in a 3.5S, and he blew the diff up, and they all laughed at him. His car was stranded in a big puddle of oil in the middle of the bridge. Bless him. God rest your soul, Kevin. Missed you, buddy. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so it's... it's uh, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to try and get another plug out and see if we can get another cylinder to test. But, uh, yeah, some very odd things going on with this engine. I can't express how tight those plugs are. It feels like that if I kept trying, I'd snap them. That's how tight they are. So, pfft, don't know what to do about that. It feels like someone's welded them in there with an air gun, as I've said, but I'm just going to have to leave it, see what happens with it. But uh, anyway, we're going to recollect connect the King lead and give it a run up and charge a bit, charge the battery a little bit, because we've been turning it over all day. Well, not all day, but all morning without any reintroduction into the battery. Um, it could be a sticky, there's a few things it can be. It could be a valve seal or it could be a sticky oil control ring. But surely if that was gone, it would affect the compression as well and it would have poor compression. So, pff, don't know. Not an expert on these engines, so I'll ask a few of my friends who are experts and we'll see what happens. Anywho, let's hop in and start it up a bit. Start it, let it run it for a bit. Let it run. It's frustrating because I've never really dived into the V8 in terms of rebuilding it. Never really touched it, to be honest with you. Anyway. A 
bit more choke, I think. It always dies once or twice. It has good oil pressure. It sounds smooth enough, but there is there is no suction at all. Zero suction. Let me demonstrate, actually. If we go in the back of the car here, right? Actually, no. Look. In a piece of card, yeah? Watch this. That is not being sucked at all. The suction is so weak. There is next, look, that should be sucking in there and nothing's happening. I mean, it's not blue or anything. Sounds healthy enough, but it does stink. I mean, it really stinks. So, it could well be it could be stem seals, it could well be. But it runs okay, like it's not awful. I don't know. I don't know. It's running on eight, I mean. Like if I go to put my foot on it, nothing happens. If I floor it, it dies. timing could be off as well which would explain why it's oh, dying like that yeah I don't know guys I don't know I don't know revs okay when it's warmed up but it's not the best it, it's like it does feel a bit like timing. We're going to have to check everything because I don't really want to condemn the engine. I don't have the money um, to be changing an engine right now. But if it's a case of the engine is just very tired, then we're better off going the 4.6 route. Let's get a bit more pat route, rather. Route? I'm not American. Uh, there we go. We're just better off going the 4.6 route if it comes to changing the engine. I have one, have half of one. Yeah, don't know guys. Anyway, comment down below, let me know what you think is wrong with the car. I'd appreciate all feedback. Um, it would really be very helpful. Oh, there we go, it's trying to die again. As I said, from cold, it just runs like crap from cold. It runs really bad. Um, but there we are. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, share it with your friends. If you know what's wrong with my car, comment down below and let me know your opinion. Um, the compression test was a success. We had good compression on all the, all the cylinders. For some reason, couldn't get any of the plugs free on the left side of the engine, except one. No idea why. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think. And until next time, thanks for watching, and bye for now.